All right, so let's take a closer look at this combo. So we can see that we got metal, plastic ends. Overall, seems like a very good quality build. We can see the belt because our Z leads are dual and they're tethered. Our main X axis is also very nice and beefy. We got rail rod with metal rollers for the X. And then for the Z, we got the standard V slots plastic rollers, which is fine as it doesn't move up and down as much as it goes side to side. This is our clean out mechanism here. So whenever the nozzle gets to here, it magnetizes. I can show you guys closer. Sure. Kind of see right there, so it grabs it, and then you can kind of see this clean out part it goes with it. And then when this releases, it throws it that way. So, and if we go to the other side, we can see we have another arm here, and it pushes on this lever on this side, like that. So, and that looks like is the cutter. So the hot end is pretty unique. We've got this tower here where all of our PTFE tubings will plug in from the Ace Pro box. Here we have the main cable to the head that controls everything. Pretty clean look. We got this nice black cover in the front. It does actually pop off where you can see the fan there. Well, it's a pretty large axial fan and that's going to be for the blower on the parts cooling underneath. So we do have silicone sock, brass nozzle. So we can hit pretty high temperatures up to 300 C and 110 C on the bed. And on this side, you guys can kind of see some venting there. So flipping around, we can see in the back, the two leads. Again, they're tethered. The ends here are all metal brackets. This part's plastic here. There's somewhat a mechanism. Same thing for this side. We can see the motor there in the back of the hot end for the extruder. There's the four bolts that we put in to install this. It looks good here from the back. You can see our belt connects on the inside of the channel. And by the way, this belt is adjustable here. And going all the way to this side, we can see the motor for the x-axis. This bracket here that we installed, nicely organized. PTFE tubing for the single. And then we got the four for the Ace Pro. V-rollers. Single motor for the z-axis. It's a pretty large motor. But since it is tethered, we just got a bearing on this side, which is quite interesting. I haven't seen it this way. And going to the very back here, we have the Y motor, also pretty large. Our belt here. The frame, very nicely built. Everything's metal. Here we have the voltage selection between 115 and 230. So make sure you're on the correct voltage. We are here on 115 and it is switched to the correct one. Nicely organized cables. Pretty thick cable here coming to the bed. Strain relieved. Looks like we got sensors under there. And on the back here on the top, we can see a little brush here where the nozzle cleans out. And in this corner here, we have the spool holder that just kind of slides on if you're gonna use the single filament option. And right in the back, beside the spool holder, we have the power input port. So it is fused with an on and off switch. We got a couple of orange cables coming out here. Let's go ahead and get this foam out. So that brings us to the build plate, which is 250 by 250 and 260 tall is our build volume. We got a double sided PEI sheet, which is good for PLA, ABS and PTG. It is magnetic and we can see the other side, same texture. There is kind of like a slot where it lines up, so it's not hard at all. You just kind of go to that corner and it falls right in. And here's our magnetic mat underneath. It is an aluminum bed. It is not insulated. Technically not a big deal for the size. Metal frame there. We are also running on rails with metal rollers. So that should give us a lot of precision. And then here we have the adjustment for our belt on the Y axis. So going to the front, we got a little cover here. So if you weren't going to use any of these, you could cover it. But if you are, I guess this cover just kind of sits like that. So this is going to be connecting to our Ace Pro. And then we have two USB ports, which is nice. They put two. You can use one, let's say, for the camera and one for like a thumb drive. Then going to this side, we just have a number three for Cobra 3. Pretty clean there. And here we have the manufacturing label, the name, the print volume, size of the machine. And it weighs 9.2 kilograms with the 400 watt power supply. But on this side, we have our touch screen. It's a decent size. It's got pretty large large bezels. Let's go ahead and peel this protector. But should do the job just fine. And what's cool about the screen is that it can swivel or move up and down here to get the right angle that you want, which is really cool. So it's almost standing up straight there and leaning all the way down. So very nice. And here I got the printer tilted on the side so we can see a little better underneath. So we can see the channels. Looks like our main board is under here. There's a pretty large fan cooling it. Some wires, our power supply. And yeah, very well built. And these rubber feet are pretty large and squishy. So yeah, everything looks really good. As far as the printer itself, let's take a closer look at the Ace Pro. We do have this plastic wrap around it. So this is kind of like a cabinet with the top door that's kind of misted in dark black that opens up and you do have to unlock it here. You can see the lock and unlock. So what's unique about this thing is it could actually be used like a dry box also. 
So here we have the PTF tubing to interconnect between the box and the printer. And there's some instructions on how to do that. Here on the inside, we can see there's some venting, separation between the rolls. We can see plastic rollers. And on the front, we got rollers also that are very smooth. Four spools will go here, and each spool will feed into input port here, which will grab it and then send it to the machine. So let's close the lid for now, lock it. You guys can see what it looks like on the side, on the other side, and on the back, the manufacturing label there. And going to this corner, we have the inputs, which is the communication between the box and the printer. And the reason there's two, because one of them is an extension to another box. So you can have two boxes, up to eight different filaments that can be fed to one printer. We've got a little fan there for cooling. These are our output ports, where our PTF tubing is gonna go from here to the printer and then to this side we have the input power with an on and off switch and this is what the bottom looks like we have pretty nice squishy long rubber feet on the four corners